So shame on you. White people are very uncomfortable about even being considered racist, especially towards black people. They'll just pretend that they are colorblind. <laughs> I don't know if you ever come across this. like, oh my God, was he black? Oh, I don't even, I don't even know. No, because you see, I don't see color, so I have no idea. Like, what do white people say when they don't want to seem racist towards Asian people? They're just like, oh, I don't see eyes, so I don't know. I, I just see two holes in your face, so I have no clue. I don't know. Yeah. I don't see eyes, I don't see color. I just see heat, really. I just see warmth <laughs> emanating from bodies. Do you remember the movie Predator? I see the way Predator sees. That's how I see. Just red splotches everywhere. And Predator wasn't racist and neither am I, so. <laughs> just shake it off, guys. It's fine. This is how we do, man. This is how we categorize people, right? doesn't mean that there's hate in our hearts. This happened to me the other day. I'm sure it's happened to everybody. I was just trying to describe someone, a friend of mine, uh, to someone, and they couldn't quite recall who I was talking about. And so I just kind of rattled off three words about the guy real quick. I wasn't even thinking. I was like, yeah, you know, Lenny, he's the short, bald, fat guy, right? And here's the thing. He got it. He mean, they always get it after three. He was like, Lenny, got it. Yep, I know who you're talking about. Got it. <laughs> like, guys, that's all we get are three words. Words, that's, that's it. Like, have you ever considered, and I want you to take a second, and you at home too, what, what are your three words? What, what three garbage words are just gonna pour to someone's mouth to sum you up as a human being? Like you're a coat at a lost and found or something. Like me, I know I'm tall and I'm skinny, but I don't even wanna know my third, cause the third's the worst thing you ever thought about yourself. So he's like, oh, Rick, yeah, he's tall, he's got dark hair. He's annoying as hell, though. Have you ever talked to that guy? He's the worst. He's friends with Cindy. Do you know Cindy? She's short, she's got blonde hair. She's a slut, she's kind of a slutty. Like, if I had to do you, sir, I'd be like, oh, yeah, he's got that beard, decent build. Oh, this looks like he's gonna murder you, though. Isn't that weird? So he's got that homicidal look in his eye. What is that? Because that's all we get. We get three words, three memes, three descriptions, three things to impress upon people. And if you're black, you really only get two. Because uh, we all know black is topping that list. Same goes if you're Asian or if you're gay or, or you're a midget. In fact, if you're an Asian gay midget, you're done. That's it. That is who you are forever. No one's ever gonna be like, oh yeah, Tommy's the Asian gay midget. She's what else? Uh, he also likes archery. That was the other thing. I love the diversity, man. That's why I love living in New York. Uh, large gay population in New York too, uh, especially in Chelsea here. I was down in the subway just the other day and uh, I heard this delightfully homophobic comment from this woman. <laughs> Apparently her husband's brother got hit on by a gay guy and this just, just blew her mind. She was hysterical. She was like, oh my God. And like, you know Robert, Robert is super, super straight. And there's another term for super, super straight. It's gay. Can we all agree on that one? Nobody needs two supers before the word straight. To me, the sexuality spectrum is kind of like a game of Pac-Man. If you go too far to one side, you pop back up on the other side. <laughs> and here's the thing too, guys. Gay people, they are the wrong people to be bigoted against because they have what I like to call a very high karma factor. And by that, I mean if you truly have hate in your hearts towards homosexuals, chances are you're probably gonna have a gay kid. I feel like that's just how <laughs> the universe works. That's how God even decides. He's like, this is gonna be hilarious. And that's what he does. Thank you. And the really homophobic ones, like, you know, they're like, hey, get out of my barn. Like those guys? <laughs> 
People think you're gay. Those conversations happen. You've definitely pulled your friends aside before, ladies especially, and been like, I don't know, I feel like. I feel, I feel like, I feel like Rich might be gay. Do you know, like, it's just weird because he hates them so much. It's almost like he's repressing like an inner, like an inner gay thing. Does that make any sense? And that happens with no other group. No one's ever like, I think he might be Mexican. I don't know, we don't know. <laughs> it's just that he hates them so much. It's weird, it's like he's repressing an inner Mexican. He's always talking about that wall and how big it should be. And we don't see him on the weekends, so we don't know what he's up to. We don't know what he does. I'm not sure. People get things wrong all the time. I was uh, having an argument with a friend of mine the other day, and she was going on this tirade about men and about how men rule the world and about how men run everything, and she was going on and on. She was like, yeah, well, go ahead. Look around you, right? Everything you see is phallic-shaped, isn't it? Yeah, go ahead. Look at our bombs and our rockets and our missiles, all phallic-shaped, clearly man inventions. <laughs> now, guys, I'm no rocket scientist, but I have the feeling that even if the roles were reversed and, and women ran everything, I just don't feel like a vagina-shaped rocket <laughs> would do the trick. I, I feel like there'd be a lot of wind resistance. I don't know. Because like, you got to think like an engineer, right? And simplicity is key. And you have to admit, the phallic shape, <laughs> very simple design. Like, God did not try very hard when he made men. He definitely took some more time with you women. You are creme brulee. We are ramen noodle. I get that. <laughs> and to be perfectly honest with you, ladies, before you clap, you got a lot of crap going on down there that, frankly, I just don't want in our rockets, okay? <laughs> think of every man missile ever invented. It's always three, two, one, blast off. That's it. No vagina missile's gonna take off like that. It's gotta be in the right mood. And uh, it's not gonna count down from three, it's gonna count down from like a thousand. When it finally does get down to three, two, one, it won't be the push of a button or the turn of a key. There's gonna be cranks and levers and pressure release valves all intricately timed. And if you screw up one, you gotta start all over again. Meanwhile, there's one poor, sorry son of a bitch trying to man the entire thing. The commander's on the phone. He's like, how come the missile didn't launch, soldier? He's like, uh, I don't know, sir. I don't think we talked to it enough. Uh, there weren't enough candles. Uh, I think it's still mad about last week, to be honest with you. You guys have been great, man. My name is Rob Ryan. Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Kareth Foster is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. All right. All right, hey, come on, one more, keep it going. How you doing? Boy, we are having fun, fun, fun. So I'm still introducing people. Uh, Y'all having a good time? All right. I'll bring this young lady. Uh, she said her name is like a carrot with a lisp. Carrot with a lisp. And she was on IMAX in the morning. And also, it's Carrot, Carrot, am I saying it right there? Carrot Walker. Is that right? I just had a baby. Thank you. So I'm not just glad to be out of the house, I'm glad to have a shirt on. This is a very special occasion. Actually, you know what, I, 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 this is actually my second baby in two years. I know, I know. So I think that means do not get me wet or feed me after midnight. 
Uh, but my friends are like, why would you do that? Why would you have kids back to back like that? I'm like, look, I don't know if you realize this, but I'm like 84. Okay? And if I didn't make it happen quickly, there was a very good chance my kids could come out looking like a Picasso painting. I love that you laughed at that. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Seriously, because if anybody cried, I swear to God, I could breastfeed the back row from here. You think I'm kidding? And I know it's New York, so some of y'all might pay for that, but <laughs> this, is, this is a family show. <laughs> oh my God. No, I really, by the way, I am black. I'm black, don't crack. That's why I look this good at this age. Um, no, I have to, I, I have to acknowledge that because, you know, people are like, yeah, that ass is black, but that voice, no, no, <laughs> not so much. Uh, I used to be able to describe myself in one word. I could tell you people I was a Huxtable, right? And people got it. Like a year ago, people were like, oh, yeah, sure. She comes from an affluent African-American family. Her parents are professionals. Now I say that and people think my dad roofied my Girl Scout troop. <laughs> I know. It's awful. Awful. <laughs> you know what else is awful? <laughs> Y'all, before I had kids, a good day for me was if my bra and panties matched. Now a good day is if when I laugh, sneeze, or cough too hard, I don't pee myself a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Nobody told me. I'm kind of mad at my parent friends for, like, not warning me what was going to happen. Like, I did not know that pregnancy makes women crazy and men stupid. <laughs> Nobody told me that. I found out at my first ultrasound. Uh, that's when, you know, they give you the picture now of your, of your baby, right? You can take it home, put it on your refrigerator, freak out your neighbors, right? Because it looks like you got a baby in a pickle jar. And uh, so they actually, they give you this picture to take home. And I, I handed it to my husband. I'm like, you go in the lobby with your phone, send a text to my parents so they can see their first grand. I'll meet you. I come out, I'm dressed, I'm ready to go. He's got this big grin on his face. I'm like, did you do it? Did you send a picture to my parents? He goes, I did. And I put it on Facebook. I go, you did what? What were you thinking? Are you out of your mind? Or what the hell? He goes, why are you so upset, Kareth? I didn't tag you in it. <laughs> Who else's fetus would you be having on your Facebook page, you jackass? So it really should be no surprise when I truly got the worst birthday present ever from him when I was pregnant. I, uh, I hear him on the phone and I hear him going, uh-huh, yeah, oh, she can't? Oh, yeah, she's like six months. So I realized like he was being a cheap bastard, he got me a Groupon, which was fine. <laughs> At least he got me a present, right? But I'm thinking, you know, maybe he got me something cool like skydiving, like something I obviously cannot do pregnant. He hangs up, I'm like, what, 